Welcome everyone, I'm Pastor Brian Shear and this is Calvary Cafe and with me today, I've got a couple guys with me today, I've got Ronnie here to my left, Ronnie Lawson and Glenn Hurst as always to my right and then Charlie Gray who's been on Calvary Cafe before. Um, we actually all graduated high school together and uh, we had a fifth guy that was going to be here today but he was unable to make it, he was sick and that's uh, Scotty George. But anyway, uh, what we want to talk about today is Calvary Chapel specifically. I don't know how many, of course, I don't know how many people have seen the movie, but <laughs> uh, the movie Jesus Revolution, it's actually the beginnings of Calvary Chapel, and went and seen the movie, and it's an awesome movie, and encourage anybody to go out and see that, it's, it's very <coughs> inspiring. Uh, but one of the things I noticed in the movie, and, and they just probably ran out of time, didn't have opportunity to write this stuff in, but one of the things that was not in the movie is what was so attractive uh, to uh, Calvary Chapel uh, or Chuck Smith and that was his verse by verse teaching. Uh, he's an expository teacher. He's going through the Bible verse by verse, chapter by chapter, book by book in a very simple, practical, educational and applicable way. And, and his philosophy was keep it as simple as possible. Um, and that, that's why so many people were attracted. And w one of the things I want to touch upon is why is verse by verse teaching so important? And I believe it's important because you're getting thing, everything in its proper context. Um, you're, you're capturing the context. You're understanding why Paul was writing to a certain group, uh, what his specific goal was in the letter that he was writing, or any other book of the Bible for that matter. Um, that's one of the reasons I came back to Kennett, and it was, uh, to start this, this Calvary Chapel. Uh, and, and people would ask me, why are you... Uh, coming back to Kennett, and I said, well, I teach the Bible. There's not any churches around here teach the Bible. And they said, well, don't all people, all churches teach the Bible? No, what they're doing is teaching from the Bible. And basically the way the standard teaching or most uh, popular teaching is what's uh, a, a topical teaching. Basically, you start with your premise, and then you go to the Bible to support your premise. And uh, there's a lot of good teachings that come from that, but there's also been a lot of bad teachings that come from that. Uh, the problem with that style of teaching is that you can teach whatever you want from the Bible. You can actually teach there is no God and support it with the Bible. You can go to the psalmist, and the psalmist says, the fool has said in his heart there is no God. But you can take that one statement, there is no God, and you can support a teaching with that one statement that's taken out of context. So that's, that's the goal in a verse-by-verse -verse teaching is to get the context, get a better understanding why something was written. So that's Calvary Chapel. And uh, I've got a clip here from uh, Chuck Smith, um, the, the pastor in the Je Jesus Re Revolution, uh, the one that was founded upon you know, the, the Calvary Chapel movement. So we're going to take a quick look at that. And then what I want to do is come back and... Uh, the four of us discuss how this verse by verse teaching has impacted our lives. So, our here's life a clip. as well. You've started a church that has turned into a movement of churches around the world. It's called Calvary Chapel. They have various names. Uh, you know, work called Harvest, uh, Micah's Horizon, uh, John Corson is Applegate, but it's a ministry philosophy in a nutshell, like, like almost a summation. Calvary Chapel is what? It is the exposition of the Word of God, encouraging the people uh, to read the Word of God and expounding to them the Word of God. Uh, and and it's, it's really built on the Word of God. It, yeah. and, you know, it's just God honoring His Word as He said He would. He said He'd honor His Word even above His name. Right. And so uh, it's just uh, the movement has been built upon the solid teaching of the Word <laughs> of God. So. Well, what that was Pastor Chuck Smith. Of course, he was being um, interviewed by Greg Laurie, uh, who's also uh, in the movie. The story it was actually his story, Greg Laurie's story. And uh, he was talking about what was happening in his teenage years, that Jesus revo uh, revolution, uh, it was a movement of the Holy Spirit, but it was all coming from that verse-by-verse -verse teaching. So I'll start with you, Charlie. How's that impacted you? What, or what do you see that sets Calvary Chapel apart? Uh, well, Brian, I was sitting here thinking about it, and... I've been to a lot of different churches before coming to Calvary Chapel, and I heard a lot of good teachings. I got saved in 1996. That's right. Okay. And uh, I, I didn't really under, understand at the time fully right. what that meant. Uh, I just knew what I was being told. 
Right. And, uh, you know, after coming to Calvary Chapel in, at 2-9, I believe, 208, been here 15 years now, and I remember the first night I came to your house. Right. <laughs> we don't want to get into that. Yeah, I'm going to tell him. The first thing he said to me is, man, you've gotten fat. <laughs> he was only about 130 pounds in high school. It's been uh, 30 years. Like you said, said, we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> anyway, I, I had a lot of questions that, that you tried your best to answer, and my curiosity was aroused. Right. And so I came to one of your services, and, and my curiosity became even more and more aroused because of the way you were teaching God's Word. Right. It, it just raised more and more questions. So I kept coming through the conviction of the Lord. And I was a saved man at this time. But I had no good understanding of what that meant or right. what the growth process meant or drawing near to Jesus and being set apart for the works of the Lord. I didn't know any of that stuff. I didn't know what that looked like, what that meant, what was uh, not really expected of me, but what my desire should be. Right. Uh, but as time went on, and I kept hearing the Word of God being taught in an expository way, the historical value of it, the prophetic value of it, the applicable value of it, my curiosity just became stronger and stronger. And the more I went, the more I was learning. Right. The more I was learning, the more I was learning continuously. And after a while, I realized that I can't go anywhere else. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm, I'm just right. being honest. I, you know, I had been to other places, and I'm not condemning other churches. I've met a lot of good Christian people in, in all walks. But for me, it was Calvary Chapel because that's where the explanation was in God's Word. That's where the truth of His will for me was revealed, unexplicably, in a very uh, down-to-earth, a very common, a very simple manner that I could get. I could get a hold of it, you know. So I just kept coming. Fifteen years later, I'm still here, and I won't, I won't go anywhere else for that reason. That's what's kept me coming back. Now, during that 15 years, there's been some indecision on my part. There's been some butting heads. There's been some disagreements within the body, you know, from myself, whatnot. But through it all, the foundation of God's truth from his word is what has built that solid foundation, that solid rock that's kept me coming back and will be here forevermore. That's what Calvary Chapel has done for me. Right. And, and that's why I, my, my heart's desire is here. Right. And that I, won't change. That's a similar story there. I, I grew up in this area and had been to you know various churches, in Baptist, Pentecostal, uh, Church of Christ. And so I'd been to different churches, and when I... I just got to that point, you know, there was a lot of argument and debating as to what was scriptural and what was not scriptural, or what a, what scripture was saying this or concerning that. And so I just kind of walked away from my walk with the Lord. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's necessarily my walk with the Lord or I walked away from church. I, I right. just, but anyway, I get, ended up getting in the Air Force, and uh, I was stationed in Lodges Field, Azores, uh, with a base chaplain, and we played golf together every weekend, and uh, he kept inviting me to church back, you know, day after day, week after week while we were there, and I finally went, and uh, what he was doing there, and I didn't realize at the time, and I, I'm uh, thinking there's a lot of people don't fully understand what we do here. They come to church, there's some music, there's a teaching, they go home, been to church, but they don't understand that what we're doing is teaching the Bible verse by verse. Right. But anyway, I started attending the base chapel there. When I left the base chapel, come back stateside, I was looking <clears throat> for a church. And, and I naturally went to the Baptist church because that was primarily the church I was in when I was growing up. And I just kept saying, there's something missing here. There's something missing. And uh, I happened to turn on Calvary Chapel radio, uh, it was CSN, Calvary Satellite Network, on, on the radio, and I heard John Corson. And he was teaching verse by verse, chapter by chapter. And I said, that's it. That's what I'm missing. Because that's what the base chapel was doing. He was teaching verse by verse. And I went home, and I got on the Internet, and I pulled up uh, John Corson's website, and I started listening to all his teachings. It started in Genesis. And I stood up all night long Amen. just because I, 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 I just, just had a craving for it. I couldn't let go of it. And then having to go to work the next day. But, yeah, it was that it was that was what grabbed hold of me was that verse-by-verse -verse right. teaching. And it's like, this is what I've been looking for right. since I've come back stateside. The, well, it's, the Word of God, it, it, it comes alive to you. And right now, after 15 years later, there's a whole lot more that I haven't discovered than I have. 
Right. And I know that. But the, the prospect of learning even more and more and more is very exciting to me. Right. Yeah, I've, I've never experienced that <clears throat> anywhere. Well, I think it's very vital to growth. A absolutely. Uh, because what we're talking about here is the mind of God. And if we're not going into the mind of God, chapter by chapter, right. book by book, then we're not really getting the whole counsel of God. We don't have a full understanding uh, and we will never have a complete or full understanding of God, but you can grow deeper and right. your walk can become more mature and your faith will be building upon right. that. Right. Um, a lot of people get saved and they're really not learning what the Bible says and so they become stagnant. And Paul's Paul did crit a criticism of the church at Corinth. He, he says, man, you guys are still in the milk. You should be on the meat by now. <laughs> so, and, so, and I think that that verse-by-verse verse teaching <coughs> is the meat, getting into it. One other thing, and you can move on to Glenn here or Ronnie, is uh, I've heard this said many times within these walls is that we're here to be equipped. Right. Uh, you know, and, and equipped for what? That's the sharing of the gospel, the greatest commission ever given to me. Given to me. Right. You know, and that's, that's what we're about. And uh, I couldn't be doing that, I don't believe, at this point, without this type of teaching. Right. That's what it's done for me. I believe the verse by verse helps me understand it more. And uh, on the aspect of the movie is uh, like our church. Come as you are. Yeah. The teaching will help <clears throat> you get through the struggles in life <clears throat> and to help you learn more. There's not, there's nobody in this church that, are able to judge because they're not God. God is the one that judges, and they are teaching you. We are teaching, Brian and Glenn are teaching you verse by verse, and there's no condemnation thrown on you. There's no judgment thrown on you. The only thing they're here point. for <laughs> is to to teach you the Word of God and hope that you pay attention and learn and then you your life will change in, in a positive way where you love God. I won't say like God loves you because God has more love than right. than there there is. But this chapel teaches you love, love. <laughs> Love <laughs> and and I, <laughs> I I and I enjoy it more because I am around buddies that we've been friends for a long long time. We we've seen our <laughs> we've seen our wrongdoings. We've seen fifty years <laughs> our uh, right doing, and we've seen changes right. Amen. in all of us and. Hopefully the changes get stronger, and hopefully we can get more of you guys out here to to just learn. Come as you are. That's 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 a, the bottom dollar. Come as you are. That's a very interesting Amen. point that Amen. he's made here. Um, the, as he was talking about in the movie and what he's experienced here in Calvary Chapel. Well, one of the things that um, that's another uh, principle or uh, support to this idea of verse by verse teaching. Because I can't remember the name of the church, but um, Chuck Smith was at this other church, and I wish I remember the name of it. But it was there that he began the verse-by-verse -verse teaching. And once he started that verse-by-verse -verse teaching, this church exploded. I mean, it was just uh, within a year, you know, the, the attendance had doubled, even <coughs> tripled at some point. But because he was, uh, this verse-by-verse -verse teaching was so powerful, that church, the uh, church government asked him, to move, or his denomination asked him to move to Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa. And there, there at Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa, it was a very slow start. But what he would tell you, and it's in the interview, <clears throat> the full interview, what he would tell you is that when he started the verse-by-verse -verse teaching, that's when he truly grabbed hold of grace and had a full understanding of grace. And so it was, <clears throat> it was that grace in him that he was enabled to impart to others. Amen. Amen. I came here with a lot of baggage, uh, self-inflicted negative baggage, and also baggage from uh, from serving in ministry before. Uh, he was talking about topical teaching earlier. What verse-by-verse -verse teaching has done for me, 
Jesus said it. He said, you search the scriptures because you think in these you have eternal life, but it's these that are giving testimony of me. Fortunately for me, I was one of the lucky ones that uh, my, I had destroyed my own life to where I knew there was no doubt that I, what I needed was a relationship with Jesus. But I, my understanding was corrupted by both years and years of <clears throat> traditions, of uh, things that people mistakenly thought about the Bible, uh, about uh, years of, of me teaching topically and, and getting it twisted out of its context. So my understanding was corrupted. I had all these uh, false ideas about who God was and what his word was saying to me. And when I started here, it was because my life was in utter despair. And uh, it, it's Verse-by-verse verse teaching is not as popular as topical teaching because it's not as entertaining. Right. right. Uh, Good point. But it's a lot more beneficial. Uh, it has been for me. It has introduced me into who Jesus really is and that he's in every book of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, that this is all about him, a relationship with him, a love relationship with him. And verse-by-verse verse teaching has taught me the truth about what scripture is saying and it has extinguished a lot of those false ideas for me it has given me uh, hope the word of God has given me hope when I began to understand it in its context what was really being said like Charlie talked about a while ago the historical value that's in it the applicable value that's in it the prophetic value that's in it all these things will be skipped around. When I was in seminary, I had a professor that warned me about thumbprints on my Bible. And he said, if you don't study the Bible verse by verse, book by book, chapter by chapter, you'll have thumbprints on your favorite parts right. or the parts that aren't as offensive to you. Right. Or, or the parts that, <laughs> yeah. that challenge you right. or the parts that scare you. You've got to get the whole thing. And that's why I love serving in Calvary Chapel. And that's why I love the less entertaining verse-by-verse -verse right. teaching right. because it is, it, is, it is giving me a life that's built on the foundation of Jesus Christ and a proper understanding of who he is. You hit up on something as you go deeper. That's one of the things about verse by verse teaching, is that and you know there's several books I've taught five, six, eight, sometimes even ten times. Uh, but the interesting thing is, is you're going verse by verse through each one of these books. When you come back around to them, uh, it's the, it's miraculous. You begin to see something you did not see before. Yeah. And what the, what the Word of God is doing is taking you deeper and deeper yeah. and deeper. So yeah, when you right. come back around to something and teach it again, you're still going. I mean, yeah. it, it, you see, it, it's like the Lord's opening your eyes each time you go through. It's helping you to see this to a greater degree. And one of the things is that when we see to a greater degree, and we're taking, uh, it's because we're taking the Word of God in and applying it to our, our lives our eyes are open all the more. Amen. And so we're able to see more. Amen. Uh, we're able to see things that others can't see. We're able to hear things that others can't hear. And it's just that growing relationship with the Lord, having a better understanding of Him. Right. And it's the Him who opens our eyes. It, it, that type of study not only teaches us who He is, it also teaches us, it taught me, how to love Him. Right. Yeah. It, it really does. And when we begin to learn and understand how to love the Lord, by letting him love us, we begin to to uh, get through the, the, the toughest struggle there is. And that has come to the realization to, to understand that it's not about me yeah, right. anymore. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ, always has been, always will be. To me, that's the submission part that's hard for all of us. I don't care if you're a 50-year Christian or a two-year Christian. That is the toughest part. Yeah, submission. It's total yeah. submission because... To give over to a higher authority is something by our nature we just don't want to do. Right. right we right. think we know it all, man, you know, but we don't. But when we learn that part through this type of teaching, uh, we, we begin to understand what it means that it's not about us anymore. And therefore, you can truly love God's creation, 
his people and you can with a whole heart share his good news based on what he's taught you through this type of study that's equipping the saints for the work of the Lord and I've, I've, I've gained all of that man at Calvary Chapel all and of it. it you uh, can't give away what you don't have. Amen. Amen. Uh, <laughs> a lot of it is, uh, you know, they're teaching verse by verse. And like I said before, it's it's teaching you to love. If you've got any kind of love in your body like God has loved you, then you're learning more and it wants you to open up and speak more about it. That don't mean that, you know, we can't be our, our cut up group of friends <laughs> and, you know, call Pick each on one other. He's yeah, ignorant. Keech, keech, you, know, <laughs> you know, you ignorant, you ignorant. <laughs> if one of us say that <laughs> to the other, they know it's out of love. And Amen. They laugh through it. And it, it, it's not offensive. It, it's love. We're, we're basically just laughing, joking, and showing we, love. We're ignorant. We're ignorant. That's, we, we uh, ignorant. We ignorant. <laughs> that's, that's, just, that's just the way it is. You we're, don't have to be so rigid when right. you come to church. Right. Basically what he's saying. Yeah, you come as you are. are. And, and, you know, uh, if you come as you are and you listen to what's being taught, <clears throat> you will understand the camaraderie and love and the teachings, because it's not just our pastor or assistant pastor teaching. It's everybody in the group. Right. If you have a question, no matter how ignorant you think it is <laughs> or whatnot, <laughs> ask it. You will get an answer to the best of their knowledge. Right. If they don't have the answer, they'll find it right. and give it to you, and there will be no criticism thrown upon you. Because, you know, it might be a simple question. It might just be something out of the Bible that you don't understand. And this gives us an opportunity with the Brotherhood and the Calvary Chapel and all that to learn and understand those questions that we have that we haven't understood before, even though we have seen people teach from the Bible, the verse by verse kind of puts it all in a package as it goes along, so it's much easier to understand than trying to get out there and, and learn on your own, because you're going to find out that things that you think are right, you're going to find out in the long run, a lot of them Right or wrong, well, in God's that's a benefit. That's Amen. a benefit to the verse by verse teaching because if you're in one book, and then you move to another another book, and you because you've learned this book, you move to the next book, you know that the only way you 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 know your interpretation is correct of the second book if it agrees with the previous book, Amen. and Amen. if it agrees to the next book right. over. So all this stuff you find your interpretation in the scripture. Right. The, Bible the Bible interprets, interprets itself. itself. Right. Yeah. Also, Brian, I've, I've learned, and you guys have too, I know you have, all of you, that in this type of study over a period of time as you're learning, the Lord will take you through literally yeah. life experiences right. where you have authority in what you're learning or what you're putting out. Because you know it. It's you know personal. it, right, right. <laughs> to convince someone of something, I've got to believe it myself. Right. And the yes. only way to believe it is by having gone through it. Experience. And the Lord does that right. in this type of study. It, you know, I'm going to say Calvary Chapel because it's the truth, right. you know, as I know it. And we've been through a couple of books, and it got rough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it does get rough, man. And sometimes the Word of God James, stings. James, right in your it face. Hurts. You don't hey, want to hear you're it. You're double-minded, you man. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've often, after uh, listening to Brian or Glenn speak, and uh, I've often kind of, Looked at him and said, "You was talking to me, wasn't you?" Yeah. Well, you've been talking and to that's, that's been talking good. to Cheryl about me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no? yeah. You know, it's uh, but it it's the camaraderie and the understanding that we're all here to learn right. and to learn to love Jesus more. Well, it's the Word of God speaking to you directly, especially if you're getting it in His context. Then you could take it and say, "Wait a minute, He's." 
you sometimes I mean, I've had a lot of people come. You, you talking about me? No, <laughs> but it's it's the word of God speak. Amen. Yes. Yeah. No, I wasn't responsible for your conviction. I was over here wallowing the gun. <laughs> See, there, there you there you go again. We we've become a group here at Calvary Chapel that it's it's a body of of brothers and we can go to each other head on as many years as we've been around each other uh, i know it seems people have known us from our long past that it's uh strange hearing us all talk like this but it's the learning of god we're back right. in our day we uh was a bunch of hoodlums, re <laughs> rebellious, <laughs> ignorant people, uh, and now yeah. we are are just learning and trying to get closer to God. <laughs> that way, maybe <laughs> we can teach <laughs> teach people more about the Word of God. <laughs> I'm listening, man. I ain't going to say that. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to, but I'm not uh, going to. Go ahead, say no, it. No, up. no, no, no. It's okay. Uh oh, that was one at me. I know. I got it coming. <laughs> it's amazing that, what, 40 years? We're fixing to have a 40 year class reunion. Uh -huh. uh, June the 3rd. We all graduated together, living it up in the muck and the mire of life. We all went our different ways, you know, blown by the wind, so to speak, and not knowing anything, you know. And then here we are again, back together under the same roof under the teaching of God's word and he, he just brought everything full circle right you know and I just find that amazing amazing that he's done that I know so you, you guys had corrupted me so, to the point when high school that yeah. you know I really went the wrong way and it was y'all's yeah. fault yeah, yeah. It's our fault man. Uh, we, uh, we corrupted him yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I think remember we doing all, that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all had a little corruption in us uh, back in the day. Uh, praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Praise um, the Lord. But you know, it's the verse-by-verse verse teaching that uh, over time, there's no magic wand to touch you on a tap, tap you on the head and make you all better. It's not about that. You come here, walk in the door, and say, okay, I'm here, so everything's all. No, but if we'll stay and be faithful uh, to the Word of God, and, and, and learn as we go along and stick it out and stay on this road of discipleship. The, the change is, is just consistently and, and constantly coming about. We're just becoming sanctified. Right. Amen. Uh, Amen. And, and it's the teaching, uh, the accurate teaching of the Word of God that does the sanctifying, you right. know. Yeah, and that just, just saying, you've been here 11 years. Charlie's yeah. been here 15 Almost six. Seven, six. Almost six. And Scotty's been here too. Uh, but it's it's staying. And the more you, you stay, the more you commit, the more you grow. And Amen. I've just seen some tremendous Amen. growth out of all these guys. Just tremendous Amen. growth. It's it's a blessing to be a part of it too. And we're not done yet. Amen. Praise <laughs> the Lord. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're getting old and gray and hairless and <laughs> right and, and even Rumpy. though we, even though we ignorant we're getting a little wiser <laughs> maybe maybe oh. <laughs> well guys I, I thank you for joining us today um uh, and uh to you um th that's cavalry Sha <laughs> cavalry chapel <laughs> cavalry chapel in a nutshell we, we what we do specifically here is teach the Bible verse Amen. by verse, Amen. chapter by chapter, book by book, and and uh, if you're and not attending a Bible teaching church, and we invite you to Calvary Chapel, do you have something to say? There? And worship the Lord. We worship, worship. yeah. And, and when you come through the door, we love you. Uh, and that's another thing I, I don't. Amen. Uh, contemporary worship's music. Uh, it's it's uh, just dawned on me. Contemporary worship music actually began here. Uh, not Kennett, but Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa. Right. Uh, that's where contemporary worship right. music comes from. And that's one of the things that uh, Chuck Smith was allowing, is that freedom to worship any way you desire. What and, was the and, name of that original band, Calvary um, Chapel, that started? Love that? Song. Love Song, yeah. 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 And Maranatha Music was the, uh, the record label, and then uh, I think a Vineyard record label was also founded through Calvary Chapel. So, But, yeah, it's... Uh, because growing up, you think uh, you, you have these traditional ways and what worship is supposed to look like. Right. But uh, worship is just 
pouring out your heart and uh, and in and, and many different ways uh, and that's again it started by Chuck Smith discovering the grace of God really laying hold of the grace of God and, and allowing people to be who they are yeah. and worship in their own way Amen. that's one of the most powerful things Calvary Chapel did to me is it made it okay for me to be me I didn't have to pretend to be somebody else right. I, I, was, I was as wretched as anyone could be when I got here but it was okay for me to just be honestly who I was and where I was in this discipleship process and I have honestly grown along the way and that, that that freedom that freedom to just be who i am has been so beneficial that and, and it's you been very helpful you came as you were yeah and uh listening to the word of god being taught verse by verse a little bit more understandable than other people teach but come as you are right. we love you as you are yeah, it's just not, come it's, it's not our place looking to judge. for god and we will try to help you find your way. Yeah, it's the uh, it's not we we don't judge other people and say well you got to stop doing this that or the other. We teach the word. The word moves in, and the word convicts and removes those right. unwanted things by God from right. your life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, God bless you guys. Uh, we have church service Sunday mornings at ten, Sunday evenings at six, and then Wednesday evenings at six thirty. Uh, Glenn's in the Old Testament on Sunday nights. Um, I'm in the New Testament. He's teaching from Proverbs. I'm currently in Second Timothy. Uh, my son Heath, he teaches Sunday, Wednesday nights, and he's currently in Genesis. But if you don't have a Bible, if you're not currently attending Bible teaching church, we invite you to come and be blessed. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen.